Today, we back in the Bronx. You read the title, so let's get right into it. Beginning in 2005, a violent gang, known as the Goon Squad or the Goonies, centered its operations in the area of the Ebony Gardens projects, located at 7th Avenue and 3rd Street in Mount Vernon, which the gang considered its territory. Historically, Goonies gang members were individuals who had grown up or lived in the Ebony Gardens projects. Typically, these members and associates became affiliated with the gang through family members and friends who were already members. That said, Goonies' membership was not limited to residents and former residents of the Ebony Gardens projects. Several other Goonies members and associates grew up outside of Goonies' territory, but were able to become members because they hung out in Goonies' territory with members of the gang. Goonies' members explicitly acknowledged and celebrated their gang affiliation through various means. Members often had tattoos associated with the Goonies and proclaimed their gang affiliation on social media sites by posting photographs and videos of themselves wearing articles of clothing emblazoned with the word Goonies, or 073, signifying 7th Avenue and 3rd Street, the location of Ebony Gardens, and tagging photos with comments that incorporate words like GS, Squad, Loopy Goons, and Loopy Gang. Members and associates of the Goonies made money by selling illegal drugs within this territory, such as crack and marijuana. They protected their turf by committing violent acts, including assaults, shootings, attempted murder and murder, against rival gang members and other individuals who stood in their way. The violence was intended to prevent what Goonies gang members perceived as encroachment into the gang's territory, as well as to assert the gang's dominance over rival gangs and those who struck against the Goonies. Their rivals were, the Boss Player Family or BPF, and the Get Money Gangsters or GMG. These two crews would sometime work together against the Goonies. The Goonies also feuded with the Gunners Gang and the 70 Boys. The 70s Boys were also known as the Much Better Gang, MBG. The Goonies routinely shared firearms with each other to commit acts of violence. So, we spoke about multiple gangs, but this story is about the Goonies. We will do other stories in the future coming from the perspective of said gangs, and they might feature the Goonies as aggressors or victims. Let's get into some of the crimes that took place as a result of the war. In the space of six hours, on March 11, 2012, three men were shot and killed on the streets of the city of Mount Vernon. The first shooting victim, a GMG Street Gang associate, was shot while riding his dirt bike in front of numerous witnesses. Subsequently, speculation and rumors abounded regarding the shooter. Initially, there was no credible evidence that either of the next two victims had anything to do with the first shooting, other than that they were associated with a rival street gang. The Goonies. Based on those rumors, and in retaliation, two men associated with Goonie street gang members were, by all accounts, hunted down, shot and killed later that same evening by these defendants. The incident started at about 5 p.m. on March 11, 2012, while it was still daylight. Russell, a.k.a. Russell Watkins, a GMG street gang associate, was shot and killed on 7th Avenue and Sanford Boulevard while riding his dirt bike. Hereafter a conspiracy of members of GMG was formed to retaliate against people associated with the Goonies. At approximately 8.51 p.m., Stepan Ramsey, after leaving his house at 20 Cooley Place, was shot as he attempted to get into a car. Arriving police observed Ramsey lying face down in a pool of blood, with an apparent gunshot wound to the back of his head and another to the back of his right thigh. Ramsey was taken by EMS to Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx where he died eight days later. At approximately 11.13 p.m., Cleveland Baxter was shot after he left a friend's house on Grandview Avenue. Police were summoned and on arriving, observed a BMW that had crashed into another vehicle. Cleveland Baxter was observed unresponsive in the driver's seat. Baxter was taken to Mount Vernon Hospital where he was pronounced dead at 12.40 a.m. Baxter's autopsy resulted in the removal of six bent rounds from his body. The gun used by the Goonies to shoot and kill Baxter was apparently sold after the shooting and recovered in the Bronx by the NYPD from an individual who had no connection to the shootings. As with all recovered illegal handguns, it was entered in the ballistics identification system, where the gun's ballistic profile matched that of the Baxter shooting gun. More than a year and a half of investigation, three men were indicted on murder charges and a fourth on conspiracy charges in state Supreme Court in White Plains. The Watkins killing remained under investigation. The Westchester County District Attorney said that the targeting of the gangs and the capture of the men had led to a 75% reduction in gun murders in Mount Vernon from 2012 to 2013. 
In court, the men were assigned lawyers and each pleaded not guilty. They were identified as Yeo, 26, Travi, 24, and J, 30. All three were imprisoned for a variety of crimes. The fourth, Marky, 24, was accused of being the trigger man in the Baxter murder. Much of the evidence was gathered through wiretap that was put in place after an earlier shooting. Tell them to find him, read one text message sent by Jay to Markey, after the killings of Ramsey and Watkins. This was taken as an apparent request for Markey to then ask Yeo to find a goonie to shoot, possibly Baxter, who was suspected by the men of setting up Watkins' killing. Other wiretaps captured conversations. The district attorney said it was just so bone-chilling to hear them talk about hunting down people and killing them in cold blood. In the afternoon of September 22, 2014, a man named Dean Daniels, aka Dazo, was murdered. The Goonies associate shot Daniels twice in the vicinity of Park Avenue in Mount Vernon, before running back to the vehicle to flee the scene. Daniels died as a result of the gunshot wounds. Three men were charged with the murder, Kelts, Trigga, and Ern Miltz. Before we get into the specifics, let's do a little profiling. As for Kelts, he'd been gang-banging for a while. Kelts has been a member of the Goonies since at least 2007. As a member of the Goonies, Kelts participated in numerous different crimes in furtherance of the gang. For example, Kelts participated in fraud schemes such as manufacturing fake gift cards to use at retail establishments, thereby stealing goods from the businesses. While the Goonies do not have a formal or rigid hierarchical structure, certain members have increased clout and leadership roles due to the length of their tenure and or their willingness to take the lead in perpetrating acts of violence on behalf of the Goonies. Kelts was one such member. Kelts, who had seniority in the gang, was willing to engage in acts of violence himself. He had been convicted of criminal trespass, reckless endangerment, drug offenses, and assault. He had a 2009 assault conviction, resulting from a shooting he committed on June 2, 2008. In that situation, he fired at least three shots, hitting his victim. Trigga was another Goonie member. His criminal history is long, resulting in six criminal history points. In 2000 he was arrested and then convicted of robbery in the second degree. Approximately one year later, he was again arrested and convicted of attempted robbery in the second degree, for which he was sentenced to one year imprisonment. In 2001 he was involved in robberies, which were violent. Trigga and his co-conspirators beat a woman while attempting to steal her purse. That same day, Trigga and others beat a man unconscious and then stole his belongings. In 2007 Trigga was convicted of selling crack and sentenced to three years as imprisonment. Trigga made a poor adjustment to supervision and twice had his parole revoked. Then on two separate dates in June 2009, Trigga was convicted of assault in the third degree, during which Trigga hit the victims. Let's get into what led up to the murder of Dean Daniels, also known as Dazo. On the night of September 20 to 21, 2014, Ern Mills, who was another member, younger than Trigga and Kelts, had his vehicle stolen at gunpoint by Dazo. Afterwards Ern Miltz drove to meet Trigga. Upon hearing what happened, Trigga pointed out that this was not the first time Daniels had done something to Ern Miltz, and that Ern Miltz needed to protect his reputation. Trigga told Ern Miltz that Trigga could retaliate against Daniels on Ern Miltz's behalf, but such action would not solve the problem of Daniels and others perceiving Ern Miltz as weak and continuing to rob him. Trigga told Ern Miltz that Ern Miltz would have to retaliate himself if Ern Miltz no longer wanted to be perceived as weak. The same night, Ern Miltz also told Kelts about the carjacking, and Kelts responded similarly that Ern Miltz should retaliate against Daniels because Daniels was making all of them look bad. On September 22, 2014, Ern Miltz, Trigga, Kelts, and another Goonies associate were in a car together when they spotted Daniels on the street in Mount Vernon. Trigga and Kelts reiterated that Ern Miltz needed to confront Daniels, and if Daniels did not return Ern Miltz's car keys, Ern Miltz needed to retaliate. The Goonies associate advised that he had a gun that Ern Miltz could use. Ern Miltz exited the car with the other Goonies associate and the gun, while Kelts and Trigga stayed behind in the vehicle. Ern Miltz approached Daniels on the street and demanded the keys to Ern Miltz's car. When Daniels refused, Ern Miltz shot Daniels twice, killing him. Ern Miltz and the other Goonies associate fled back to the car in which Trigga and Kelts were waiting. Kelts drove the four of them away from the scene to New Rochelle. The following year would be deadly as well, not before the Goonies would take a hit though. 
At about 2.50 a.m. August 9, 2015, Kelts was in the vicinity of 523 South Fulton Avenue in Mount Vernon. A gunman from a rival gang, Mark, shot Kelts. City police officers who were on patrol at the time of the shooting heard multiple gunshots coming from the area. Police were then notified by Mount Vernon hospital personnel that Kelts was at the hospital. They learned that Kelts had been shot seven times, including once in the head. Surveillance video from a nearby business was part of the evidence in this case. Eight months after the murder of Dean Dazo Daniel, there was a robbery that took place. On or about April 21, 2015, Triga and an unindicted co-conspirator, CC, attempted to rob an individual known as Black, whom they believed possessed cigarettes and proceeds from the sale of cigarettes that traveled in interstate commerce. Both Triga and CC were armed with firearms. Black lived at a first-floor apartment in Harlem, in a residential building. Until about early 2015, Black regularly sold untaxed cigarettes procured from out of state out of the apartment. The brands of cigarettes Black sold were Newport and Marlboro, and they were stamped with a Virginia or Georgia state tax stamp. On or about April 21, 2015, at approximately 10 a.m., Black and another individual, Victim 2, were standing in the hallway of the apartment. A third individual, Victim 3, and Victim 3's two-year-old toddler, Victim 4, were in the apartment. Triga and CC approached Black and Victim 2, and both displayed firearms. CC demanded that Black and Victim 2 go into the apartment and give Triga and CC money and cigarettes. Black and Victim 2 then began to struggle with Triga and CC. Black struggled with Triga, and Victim 2 struggled with CC. CC overcame Victim 2 and entered the apartment, encountering Victims 3 and 4. CC pointed the firearm at Victim 3 and demanded Victim 3 turn over the cigarettes and money. CC had a roll of brown tape and used a kitchen knife from the apartment to cut a piece off, and CC placed the tape over Victim 3's mouth. Black continued to struggle with Triga, and CC took the tape off of Victim 3, exited the apartment and began again to struggle with Victim 2. During the struggle, Triga pistol whipped Black in the head with a firearm and Black sustained injuries to his face and hands. Also during the struggle, a wall was damaged from the impact of Triga and Black's bodies. Not surprisingly, during the struggles, one of the firearms carried by the robbers went off and Triga and CC fled, leaving their baseball caps behind. Victim 3 saw one of the robbers, Triga, bleeding from the leg. Triga left a trail of blood in the doorway of the apartment and down the hall. At approximately noon that same day, Triga checked himself into the emergency room at Lincoln Hospital in Bronx, New York, with a gunshot wound to the left leg. Black was transported to another hospital by ambulance for medical treatment for cuts and scrapes to Black's face, head, mouth and hands, a dislocated shoulder and an injured knee. Victim 2 was also transported to the hospital, where Victim 2 received treatment for a fractured finger and tendon damage. The following day, on or about April 22, 2015, Trigger was read his Miranda rights and agreed, both orally and in writing, to speak with a special agent. He informed the agent, in sum and substance, of how the robber went down, and that prior to the attempted robbery, he had purchased cigarettes from Black. That was the Harlem robbery, so let's get back to Mount Vernon. In September 2015, tensions between the Goonies and the 70 Boys, also known as the Much Better Gang, MBG, were running high as a result of multiple recent incidents of violence, including the shooting of Celts a year prior by Mark. The Goonies would soon get back. Triga had instructed another Goonies member to keep an eye out for the leader of MBG. Midday on September 15, 2015, Trigger received information that the victim was meeting with his parole officer in New Rochelle. Kelts and Trigger drove towards the victim and began following the victim, as the victim was driving away from the parole office. You probably thought Kelts was dead, but nah, he survived the 2014 shooting. Anyway, the two were trailing the victim, and when the victim came to a stop at a stop sign outside a daycare center on Clinton Avenue in New Rochelle, Kelts and Trigger pulled up alongside the victim in their own vehicle. Kelts was behind the wheel, and Trigger fired multiple shots at the victim, hitting the victim multiple times. The victim was taken to the hospital and required extensive medical treatment, but survived. After committing the attempted murder of the victim, Kelts and Triga drove away, but their vehicle was spotted by law enforcement. Law enforcement attempted to stop the vehicle being driven by Kelts, but Kelts and Triga sped away. As law enforcement were following the vehicle, it slowed down momentarily, and Triga jumped out and attempted to flee on foot. 
Law enforcement chased down Triga and recovered a gun in a backpack Triga was carrying. At the time, Kelts managed to evade law enforcement officers. Muka was a long-term member of the Goonies and was a willing participant in the gun violence. For example, in 2012, in the vicinity of Short Street in Mount Vernon, Muka opened fire on rival gang members in connection with an ongoing feud between the Goonies and the rival gang. In the process, Muka accidentally shot a member of his own gang in the hand. Muka was a bit younger than Triga and Kelts, but also dangerous. Soon, he would be participate in a murder involving fellow gang members. One of them was Keese. Keese was a senior member who saw himself as one of its enforcers and played a role in several shootings. According to his lawyers, Keese was a good student as a young boy, but poorly influenced by an older brother and other male relatives, including a grandfather in South Carolina who was married to a woman who ran an escort service. He only met his father for the first time as a teenager, and no relationship developed from that. Behavior in school worsened, marijuana use and drinking increased. In high school, he was picked on by members of a Jamaican gang, including one who stabbed him in the back causing serious injuries. He was traumatized by the murder of a close cousin and later the death of his grandfather, whose funeral he could not attend because he was incarcerated after violating probation on a robbery charge. At 18, joined the Goonies, which operated around the Ebony Gardens apartments at 7th Avenue and 3rd Street. Criminal activity intensified as a gang member, including two convictions on weapon charges. He was involved in three shooting incidents in 2013 alone, one in which he fired his gun and the others, when he directed fellow Goonies to shoot rivals. In December of 2016, co-defendants Keese and another dude, Biddy, including several other Goonies, met on 7th Avenue in Mount Vernon. Together they sat and discussed working together. The discussion involved a plan for some of the members, like Keese, to function as muscle, the shooters, for the Goonies and for other members to sell drugs, including drugs that were robbed from other drug dealers, in order to provide financial support. On December 31, 2016, Muka and three Goonies members, co-defendants, Keese, Blacks, and Biddy, participated in the attempted murder of the leader of a rival gang, known as the Gunners. This attempted murder resulted in the tragic death of 13-year-old Shamoya McKenzie, an innocent bystander. The attempted murder of the Gunners' leader, Prince, was part of a gang feud between the Goonies and the Gunners that had been ongoing since at least 2010. Both the Goonies and the Gunners had sought to exercise control and assert their dominance over the other by engaging in countless shootings and other acts of violence. Prince himself fired shots at members of the Goonies on numerous occasions. On the afternoon of December 31, 2016, Muka, along with Keese, Blacks, and Biddy, spotted Prince walking on East 3rd Street in Mount Vernon and began following him. After following him for a short distance, the foursome split into two groups. The first, consisting of Blacks and Biddy, continued following Prince on East 3rd Street. The second group, consisting of the Muka and Keese, split off at 3rd Street and quickly walked into Times, ran down neighboring streets to catch up to Prince. As Prince crossed the street at the intersection of East 3rd Street and Tecumseh Avenue, Muka quickly approached Prince from behind, and with Key standing nearby, Muka opened fire from approximately 15 feet away, striking Prince in the arm multiple times. Well there were no pedestrians near Prince on the sidewalk when Muka fired shots at him, but there were passing vehicles in the road behind Prince. One bullet entered a vehicle passing by and struck Shamoya McKenzie in the head, killing her. Shamoya McKenzie was in the front passenger seat of the passing car, which was being driven by her mother. McKenzie was a budding 8th grade basketball star who dreamed of playing for the University of Connecticut Huskies, then in the WNBA, and eventually running a business in Mount Vernon. In posthumous honors the school made her an honorary Husky, and the New York Liberty drafted her. Last month, a seat among her classmates was set aside for McKenzie at what would have been her Mount Vernon High School graduation. After the shooting though, Muka and his co-defendants fled the scene. While running away, Keese got into the car of another Goonies member who happened to be driving by. After a brief stop, Keese got behind the wheel and drove the car to Biddy's house to pick up Muka. Keese asked Muka if he had the gun on him, and Muka confirmed that he did. Keese instructed Muka to put the gun up, meaning to put it away. Muka got out of the car briefly, returning shortly thereafter without the gun. During the subsequent drive, Muka and Keese learned that a girl had been killed in the shooting. 
Muka boasted about being the first to catch a body, namely, killing somebody, and Kees laughed and stated that the victim was probably one of Prince's chicks. They then drove to pick up Blacks and Biddy before going to Yonkers to meet another Goonies member at his apartment. That's how they ended the night. In the end, Muka got 31 years in prison, Biddy got 22 years, Keese got almost 28 years, and Blacks did also. Celts got 20 years and Triga got 25, in their connection to the murder of Dean Dazo Daniels. Hearn Miltz was sentenced to six years in prison for his participation as the Triggerman in that murder. But this about wraps it up for this one. We didn't get a chance to speak about things from the perspectives of other gangs in the area of Mount Vernon, and we will get to that soon. We definitely have to speak about Flint, who was the leader of Boss Player Family. Anyway, as always, stay low and thanks for watching.